Hello to the people, my name is Robert and in this step-by-step -step Google Forms tutorial for beginners, I will show you how to set up a survey from scratch or using a template, add images and videos, divide your questionnaire into sections and turn it into a quiz with scores. On top of that, you can export the results into Google Spreadsheets and even embed the survey on your website. Let's get started by going to the Google Forms landing page. I'll leave a link in the description. And you land on this page. This is the Google Forms landing page and we just need to sign in here. Just be aware that you actually need a Google account to use Google Forms. There's a few options already here what you can do. Now you probably don't see these recent forms, but you have option here to start for, as a, from a blank slate or you have the template gallery. So if you click here, template gallery, you'll see more options here. These are like pre-built templates that you can use and then update them so that they kind of reflect what you need to find out. So they have very ba basic stuff here. You can check them out. But actually, I'm just going to start with the blank one. So let's click on blank. And this is the Google form. And this is where you're going to update all the questions. And we're going to start by naming this form. So we'll just name it website feedback form. So this uh, name will appear when you come to this page and you can see it also updates it here. But okay, maybe it's a bit too boring that way and we can actually name it. We'll name this one like this. We want to hear your advice and then let's give it also a description. And to make it a bit more friendly, let's use language that is uh, like you would talk to a friend. So now you already have one option here for a question. If you click on it, you can actually choose from this drop down other options. So there are a few different options you can uh, put in as a question. So you have short answer, then you have a paragraph if you need something longer, multiple choice, check boxes. And the difference between multiple choice and check boxes is just that in check boxes, you can select more than one option. So you can select all of them if you want to. Drop down, you can also ask them to uh, upload a file. Now, be careful with this one. If you don't know the people that you're asking the feedback from. This is not the best way because you never know what people will upload there. So use this only for uh, people you know. Then you have linear scale, multiple choice grid and tick box grid and then date and time. And you can play around with these. So let's start by choosing the multiple choice. And we just want to ask, how did they find out about our website? And then just that's the question. I'm going to add the option friend so then add an option if you click here you'll have another option google add option and then we want as the fourth one add others so in this case they can type in what they mean so if if one of these doesn't uh, fit their description then they can also add their own one and then here at the bottom you're able to cl click on this uh, toggle and it will make it required here you can also duplicate this or delete this question. One thing I want to mention is that if you click on these three dots, there's a bit more options here. You have the option to add a description. So if you want to kind of go a bit deeper than the question, so if you want to kind of describe the question in more detail, you can add something here like this. And also if you again click on the three dots, you have the go to the section based on an answer. That means if somebody answers, let's say this, let's say they answer friend, you can then add them to a different section. So instead of going to section one, they can just jump directly to section two or submit the form. And the third option in this case is shuffle option order. So if you don't want the friend to be always on top, but kind of randomly assigning it, that's also possible. But I don't want description, so I'm going to disable it and also disable the uh, jumping to a section. Now let's add another question and you can do it by clicking on this plus icon here on the right. Let's add it. You can see it always starts with multiple choice. And in this case, we actually want a long answer. So we're going to choose the paragraph. Again, need to add the question like this, and then they can type in a long answer to that. Well, let's say we want to spice it up a little bit. Almost all of these have an option to add an image. So you could just click on this image icon. You can upload your own image or you can use already something that's in your Google Drive or just, yeah, use a URL to an image. I'll use a Google Drive. I have some images here. Let's say I want to upload this one. I just click on insert 
and now you can see the image appear here if you're not happy with it like it's quite big here you can also click on these three dots here and you can change certain things here or remove the whole thing for this question it makes no sense to have a whatever pirate ship here or ship in general i'm going to just remove this image like this and i'm going to make this question again required and then if you click on these three dots you're able to add a description or response validation and as you can see these options depend on the question type just so you know there's more options there so let's add a third question so i'm going to click on add question i'm going to choose here linear scale and let's add the question and then you can choose the scale so from one to ten but i will keep it to five and i will add the label both labels so the scale labels in this case if you answer one you basically hated the website and if you answer five they loved it now obviously make this more scientific i just added this for this example okay and i'm gonna make this one also required at any point if you want to add more elements you can add the questions from here you can also import questions from other questionnaires or you can add title and description we already have one here but sometimes you add a new section you want to add also this one then you have you can add an image so if i click on it it literally just adds an image in the middle of of the questionnaire so let's do that and again use the same image insert now you can see that the image just appears here you can add a title for the image i'm going to keep it empty and actually what if i wanted to have this image above this question well i can actually just drag it i'll grab these six dots and i drag and drop it here so now you can see that the order changed well we don't really need this image so i'm going to delete it i will select the last question same thing here you have also a video so you could come here and, and search for a youtube video or you can use a youtube url like this and now it preloaded it let's select it and you can see that it appears already here and again you can give it a, a title and then it will be there when they view this let's say i'm going to keep it so it'll be my thank you message in this case it's not true but and then the last option here is add a section now sections are like pages in google forms so if i add a new section here so you can see that after this section we're going to continue to the next section and we can just call it section two and i'm going to add to this section also a question some question now we have two sections and you'll see in a second how it works to preview this page all we have to do is go here on top and click on this eye icon so preview let's click on it and now you can see that we have this form we can fill it in you can give an answer and you can also uh, just fill it in completely you can watch the video here if you want to if you have a... and then you have this next button if you click on next button you'll notice we go to the second section so this is the way you can kind of separate things so you have one section about i don't know collecting personal details and then you actually in the second section jump into uh, your questionnaire and once your uh, the user is done here with this section they can submit this form and then this is how it will show up let's go back to our i'll just close this tab and we're back to this form and you can see now there's a response that's because i just answered my own uh, survey other other things here on top you have the customized theme and also undo and redo very useful and let's take a look at the customized theme if i click on it i'm able to customize certain things here so for example here top we can add a header so let's choose an image and i can use one of the templates here but you can also upload your own and use one of these for example like this insert now you notice this image appears you can also give the theme color so you can see this part will change so if i change this to red like this i'll add a new color you can see that it kind of mimics it it even changed the background to kind of have similar tone of color but if you're not happy with this background you can also change it here for example to gray like this or you could also 
have a bit more like pinkish like this. But I think for this background, it just uses your primary color and then it makes the background color based on that. You can also use, uh, change the font style here. You have the basic, but you have a few other options. There's not many, you can see four. I'll use formal, for example. No, that's horrible. Let's use the basic because that actually looks the best. Okay, the theme options, we can close it. And what if you work on this with somebody else? Well, you can actually share this form with them, not just to share to answer, but actually share to edit. And you can do that by clicking on these three dots and you have here add collaborators. And here you can just type in the email address of the person and they will be invited to edit this form and done. Now, probably at this point, you already want to share your uh, survey. So you can do that clicking on the send and there's few options how you can share it. So you can just send directly email from here. You just enter the email address and subject line and message, or you can share the link. So if I now copy this link and I open the incognito window, you can see that this is the form. I cannot edit it, but I can fill it in. So now if I fill it in, let's say I heard it from an influencer, some stuff, and I answer here next. You'll notice that it's in Dutch. That's just because I'm in Netherlands and because Google doesn't know what language I use. So let's just uh, send this form. And you can see here that uh, now it's been sent. And uh, this is the way you share this form. But there's also another way. You can embed it on your website. So if you click on this one, this is how you embed in HTML. Just use the HTML block and you're able to copy this code and place it in there and then it appears on your website. So let me show you an example. Okay, I'm here in my Elementor page builder in WordPress and all I have to do is search for HTML, drag it here. And now if I copy the code in this HTML code block, you can see that now the form appears fully here. And now if I save it and go to the website, people can just fill it in directly on my website without actually the need to go to Google Forms. Very useful if you're collecting data from your website. And that's how the embed works. So I'm going to close this. And there are two other tabs here. So you have the responses. Now I have two, I've responded two times to the same questionnaire. You can see you'll start getting some data. So you'll see uh, in summary what's going on with all the questions. Then you have how people respond to individual questions and also individual. So you can actually go through each of your respondents by clicking on this and see how they responded. And if for some reason you want to delete one of the responses, you can just click on this trash icon and it will delete this specific response. Sometimes you just notice somebody answered, they weren't serious about it. So you can delete it so it doesn't pollute your data. In addition, you can also delete all responses by clicking on this three dots and then you can here delete all responses just in case you've uh, played around with it and now you want to start from scratch and not have your answers there this is how you would do it and if you want to stop accepting responses you can just disable this toggle button and then uh, then people cannot submit the form anymore now another way of analyzing this information is by clicking on this create spreadsheet you click on it you can just select to create a new spreadsheet this creates a Google spreadsheet and you'll be able to see the results there. You can see that I only had two responses and now they're neatly here in columns. You have the timestamp when uh, the answers came through and also the answers to the questions. And the last tab here is settings. And here you can make your form instead of being a survey, a quiz. You can actually give points to each of the questions and then at the end it kind of sums it up and you're able to uh, provide feedback that way. And I'll show you how to use this quiz feature at the end of this video. But just so you know, you have the option to create quizzes as well here. I'm gonna disable it. Also, there are a few options for responses. You can collect email addresses when people respond. So that way you can also respond to people. But just keep in mind that if you add any, a requirement for people to add their email address, there's uh, less likelihood that they will actually answer your questionnaire. So, there's a bit of a trade-off. And then you can also, what's useful, add a limit to one response, but they would need to log into their Gmail. You could add that. You can also manage the presentation here if you wanna have show progress bar, shuffle question order. In some cases, that's really useful. You can also edit the confirmation message here. So if I edit this, 
I can now add my own response. So let's say instead of the thank you, blah, 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 whatever they have by default, I can now add my own. So I add it here like this, save. And now people will actually see this message instead of seeing what Google set by default. You could also share the result summary if you enable it. And then you have some default settings here, but I don't usually touch these. I, I don't think they're so useful, but just so you know, there's more things here. So let's take a look how to use the Google Forms as a quiz. So make sure you're in the settings and then you make this quiz, make this into a quiz. And then you need to select either you give the submission immediately. So the points are calculated immediately or then after later, after a review. Now, obviously you want to review open-ended questions. So it's not possible if you have a lot of open-ended questions, uh, then you would need to select menu review. And in that case, you would need to turn on also the email submissions, but actually it did it automatically. But just for this example, I'm gonna keep it imme to immediate. You can see here, there's few settings, missed questions, correct answers and point values. They're kind of depending on your situation. And then you can also set the global uh, default for point value per question. So let's say, if you use one point or three points, whatever that is, you can just set it here and then that's going to be the default. You can also then change it per question. So let's take a look at the questions. I'm still using the same form, so this is not really a, uh, a quiz type of a thing, but uh, it works the same way. So here you'll notice if you scroll to multiple choice questions that there are new fields here. Answer key. So if you click on it, now you can set the points. So let's say I'm going to set it to three and then let's add answer feed. You can add here some text for incorrect answers and also for the correct answers. All right on and then for incorrect answer something like false. Now, obviously you should make it a bit more helpful than this, but it's still possible. You can even add a URL or a, a video to this. OK, let's save this. So now you can see the feedback and now we need to choose which one is actually the correct answer. So let's say Google is not the correct answer and it's worth th three points. Okay, done. Nice. Now we exited this answer key. So now we're basically back to the normal view. Now you would go through other questions like that as well. Now let's take a look at how it looks like in real life. So let's send this to ourselves basically. I'm just gonna grab this URL, copy it, and then I'm gonna open incognito window and just view what I see. This way it's all fresh. So you can see that there's now the email field. I'll add my email. I'll answer it incorrectly now. And then I'll just type something here so that I can go through like this and choose these ones. And now, once I send it, you can see this should say view the score. So if you click on that, you can see that, hey, you see that this is the incorrect answer. It's in red. And then you see the feedback here. Now, since I didn't set anything for the other questions, you don't see anything like that. But here you clearly see how it works. Pretty simple. And this is how you would build a quiz for yourself. Google Forms is an awesome free tool that gets the job done, but it's not that pretty nor feature rich. If you want to have a higher response rate and more features, I recommend checking out this type form tutorial where I will show you how to make these amazing visual surveys and quizzes.